everybody, I'm Megha Kehlawar and I'm a biology expert here in the Ask IITNs and I have some really good points to tell you about your exams and syllabus, your CBSE exams, NEET exams, Science Olympiads and so many more things to whichever class belong to. So let's not waste any more time and get on with it. Start with the discussion of the chapter Heredity and Evolution from your 10th class syllabus. This chapter is really very really important if we talk about the board exams and it is really very really important if we talk about the Olympiad exams as well, right? So in the board exams, you can consider this chapter to be of at least 10 to 15 percent in your biology portion, right? That means all the major questions of 4 to 6 marks will be coming from this chapter and if we talk about the Olympiad exams, you can expect this to be 5 to 7 percent of your entire science portion. Now, apart from that, if we talk about the heredity, it is nothing but the inheritance of a lot of characteristics all around the world in the organisms, in their particular species and offspring, right? So, if we talk about heredity, this here is the inheritance of characteristics, to be very precise, of features from a parent to its offspring, right? From a parent to its offspring. Now see, it is very important for you guys to understand that who was the father of genetics because this is often considered as a good question in the science Olympiads. So Gregor John and Mendel was the person who pioneered in this domain of the science and he was single-handedly responsible for giving out all those inheritance laws. But sadly, his work wasn't considered as he did not uh, particularly provide the enough biological um, biological evidences according to that particular time which he existed in, that was 1600s. So the guy Mendel, as you can see here in this uh, particular GIR, he took the pea plants as his model organisms or as his model species and importance of taking the pea plants served him really the importance of taking the pea plants was huge because the pea plant had smaller life cycle. Also, it had number of features which could be seen easily without this microscope. So it had major features which were easily noticeable. And apart from that, another important beneficial characteristic that the pea plant had was that it could be easily interpreted with the other species, right? Could be easily interpreted. Now, having been discussed all these qualities of the pea plant, let's discuss what were the three laws of the Mendel's, right? So, as you can see the pictures, we have the first law, second law and third law in the next frame which will be discussed shortly. Important thing about this is that you need to know certain terms without those terms so you won't be able to understand the laws of Mendel, right? So the first term is the gene. Gene is basically a part in the DNA which owns a particular feature. It could account for several features such as your eye color, your hair color, your height, your voice, anything. So it is a part of DNA which is governing a feature and it is also called as the fundamental unit of DNA. Right? So it is very important for you guys to understand that. It's a fundamental unit of DNA as well as the heredity. Now you see, having been discussed that, it's very important that you understand what allele is as well. Right? So let's just hop on the allele part. Allele are nothing but different forms of the similar gene. Now see, if you guys said that some person had blue colored eyes, some person had orange colored eyes or some person had brown colored eyes. So that is the eye color which is the gene. Gene is of the eye color. And different colors that it is depicting or different colors that it is showing are the alleles, which are the different forms essentially of the same gene which is governing the eye color. I hope that is clear to all of you. 
of single chain. Now this is the fundamental portion of all the important terminologies that needs to be discussed and we did that. Now apart from that, if we come back to this picture, you see we have a green pea and a yellow pea. According to the color, you can see this, the smaller Y and the capital Y. The smaller Y is the homozygous chromosome. Chromosome is the folded and condensed part of the DNA, which you have already learned in the lower classes. So this is a homozygous chromosome because both the alleles are of same nature and this is also a homozygous chromosome. Now if we multiply or if we interpret, interpret the homozygous chromosomes, the result would be a heterozygous chromosome. And that particular heterozygous chromosome would be the dominant part. Now I'm sure that you guys haven't heard about the dominant and recessive yet. But I'll make it easy for you. Here we go. The dominant part or the dominant characteristics are the one which express themselves. Here we go, express themselves. And if we talk about the recessive parts, they are the ones which do not get expressed. Now, if it is, uh, now when we discussed about the homozygous and heterozygous chromosomes, we saw that the resultant would do was the yellow pea instead of the green. So that makes the green the recessive. And dominant is the yellow one. Do not express themselves. Right? Now if we look at the picture, that itself shows the first law of Mendel. The homozygous, both the homozygous part, which are the pure lines because they are, they have basically the same alternations of the alleles. They both result into the heterozygous, which is the dominant part of the both alleles, which are governing the same feature. That is the first law of Mendel, that is the law of dominance. Now, these laws are really comparatively very, very easy to understand if you pay attention much. So the first law is law of dominance. Now, understand this thing that the part that I am discussing can consist of four marks to six marks in your CBSC board exams and it is utterly, utterly important. Now, being discussed the vital importance of this part, you can have a smaller y as greens. This is the homozygous part and the capital Y is as yellow. This is the homozygous part and these are the parents genotype. Right? And then when these are crossed, when these are interpreted together, they would lead from one gene here and one allele from here, which will be a heterozygous and that would be the F10 generation or the first filial generation, right? And this would be of yellow color because of this particular dominant gene expressing itself. Now that is all about the first law of the dominance of the Mendel. Now when we discuss the second law of dominance, it's really important for you guys to understand that the second law of dominance is nothing but a little more extension of the first law. The second law is the law of purity of gametes or law of segregation. It just simply suggests that whenever two different alleles are inherited together in an organism, they will retain their particular feature and they will express themselves whenever gotten the chance. Now, if we talk about this first file generation here and if we intercross these together, the resultant would be discussed in the Punnett square. As you see, Punnett square is also another important aspect of the board exam. It's nothing but just a simple square that you have to draw. And that simple square will consist of different alleles from both the parents. Now this here is a Punnett square. And this makes the study of genetics relatively very, very easy. Now see, if we consider the female and male parts, we will take each of these alleles in separate boxes and we will multiply them right here like this. And we can easily make out what the progeny will be, right? So this one here would be the recessive homozygous. And this one would be here dominant heterozygous. This one also be dominant heterozygous. And this is dominant homozygous, right? So this one which you see right here 
is the one which is important because this recessive condition is only expressed in the homozygous condition and this depicts the law of segregation or law of purity of kinase that this particular allele was maintaining its features until it got the chance into the homozygous condition and expressed itself, right? Now, having been discussed that, we can also see this in this picture right here. This is the Punnett square and this is the second law of segregation. You can clearly see how we have placed everything just like we discussed in the Punnett square and this is how the recessive conditions are showing. Right? I hope that is clear to all of the people. Now, next law of the next law of the Mendel is a little complicated, but it comes into the maximum times. It comes maximum times in the exams. It is discussed maximum times in the Olympiads, and it is the most important and hugely discussed topic in all the exams. Right. So the third law is the law of independent assortment, and considering this law has a little complicated calculation as far as your standard is considered. Right. So now that is all about the two laws of uh, Mendel. The Gregor John and that we discussed about as the father of genetics. Now, for the third law, stay tuned and subscribe to our Titans, or you can join us and it will help you grow with your future. Thank you so much.